everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals and today we are going to be creating some layered tags. And I came up with this idea, I'm sure it's been uh, done before, but I wanted to do a couple of tags a little bit differently. So this is what I came up with. Let me show you one that I made yesterday and then we're going to do a slight variation on it today. And this little cutie here was all inspired by this image that I got from the graphics fairy. It is two vintage children and it is advertising tulip soap. And I just love the colors. I loved the images. So what I did is I gathered some fabric that went along with the color scheme. I created a little snippet on the side here and this right here is the pocket and I inserted some of the mini ephemera that we created the other day in my tutorial. Now this is glued together on three sides. It's glued to the back and um, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. Let me show you the back here. So this can be inserted into your junk journal just as is or clipped on the side and I just think it's adorable. So what you're gonna need for this is a heavy duty piece of cardstock or a file folder or something along those lines that'll hold up to being a tag. I don't really care for flimsy tags, meaning tags that are just made out of scrapbook paper. I don't think they hold up and they're hard to stick in pockets and you know that kind of thing. So I would suggest first getting a um, file folder, something a little more heavy duty than just a regular sheet of paper. And this is cool. This is what I'm using today and I just think it was a really good idea. <laughs> I got a box of phonics key cards at a thrift store. And I've gone through and I've used these as is in previous junk journals. And let me show you this. Um, some of the pictures though are not quite what I want to put in a junk journal. And for example, a nail. You know, I, yeah, no. <laughs> or a piece of meat, or maybe a bone. So what's cool on these is they're exactly the, the weight of paper that I want. And they're also a little vintage looking. They're, you know, kind of that uh, not white. It's kind of a beigey cream color, and they're perfect. So I have been using these for the background, you know, for the base, I should say, not background, the base of my tags because I've used a lot of the really cute phonics cards, you know, like flower and baby and, you know, birds and stuff like that. But I don't think I'm ever gonna make a journal that, you know, needs a meat or a nail <laughs> as the focus. So we're gonna take a couple of those out. I don't know, you know or well, maybe dwarf, I don't know, you never know. So anyways, these are really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna take out a couple of these. And what I want to do is create a uh, the base, which is going to be this, and we're gonna cover this with a piece of fabric. And that's exactly what I did on this. Now, in addition to your uh, base for your tag, you do need um, a couple patterned pieces or whatever you want to use of uh, paper. And this can be scrapbook paper. So I have a pile over here I'm going to get to. So you need a couple sheets of that and also a few images you want to use for the focal point of your layered tag. And I found these two beauties also off Graphics Fairy. I'm telling you, I love the Graphics Fairy. Oh, so we're going to uh, base everything off of these two pictures right here. So let's get going. All right. So I, okay. So what did I say? Summary here. You need a couple pieces for, you know, your sturdy base. And you're going to cover this up so it doesn't matter what's on there. 
a couple pieces of fabric that coordinate with your images. And I've pulled a couple here and I'm going, I cut them a little bit larger than these two images. This is a three by five, this is a four by six. And I think those are pretty good sizes for tags in your junk journal. So I am going to use this as the second tag and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. And this as the second tag. So let's get going. Yay! Hey. Okay, let's see, where do we wanna start? I'm gonna start by cutting up your background piece. And I am going to just glue this on to the back of this. Now I did print this on a little bit heavier uh, piece of paper, but I still think it needs a little bit extra. So we're just gonna glue that down real quick. And you know me with my double-sided tape. Rock on with the double-sided tape. I love double-sided tape. Just love it. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't get over it. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be hopefully pretty quick and pretty easy here. So we're gonna cover up the meat because we don't like meat on our junk journals. At least I haven't seen anybody that uh, uses meat Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna cut this down in a minute. We're gonna do both of them at the same time. So I'm gonna get this one going too. All right, we're gonna use bone. <laughs> we're gonna use the bone phonics cards. Do you guys remember phonics cards in school? I do. I bet they don't use those anymore. Everything's on the computer these days, right? Okay, so I'm just going around the edges here my tape. If I get a little bit over the edge, I think that'll be okay because we're going to cut this down. Cut this down and I am going to use uh, this cutter here from the paper studio. I'm not going to be using my uh, guillotine cutter today. Just use this little baby. All right, so there's one. Let's see, here's the other. Just go right along the sides there. All right, so we have our two focal points here, and I am going to clip the little bit um, extra on the sides there with my corner punch. Where's my corner punch? Here it is. And when I printed these images, as you guys can tell, I did distress the edges already. So that's something if you want, you know, more of a distressed edge, you can do that. There's a little bit sticking out here of the, of the phonics card. So I'll clip that off and do the same with this beautiful leaf. Excuse me, beautiful lady here. Mm, love it. Love it. Okay, so there are our two top layers of our layered tags. So we're going to move those off to the side. They're pretty much finished. If you want to, and I will probably do this hmm, I just, if they're finished, and then I think, oh, yeah, but I, I am going to distress the back. So we'll do that later. Take your two pieces of fabric that coordinate with your images here, right? And we're going to cover another piece of, or I should say, another phonics card or your file folder with the fabric. Now, I've found that the double-sided tape works or Fabri-Tac or Art Glitter Glue. So, this is a heavier piece of fabric. I would suggest using a heavier piece of fabric, not a real like uh, satin or silk, just because I think it'll hold up better on the tag. But another thing I think I forgot to mention is I did cut the fabric a little bit larger 
than the image. So if this is a three by five, which it is, let's see what this is. It's about an inch larger. So the width is four and that's six. So a three by five with a four by six back background or other tag, if you want to say. So let's layer this. I think you can use Fabri-Tac on the um, heavier pieces here because it doesn't it doesn't show the glue globs. So I'm just going to go around the whole thing here, and I kind of like um, when I cut the fabric that it's not uh, totally precise, meaning it's got some frayed edges and it's. Uh, you know, not exactly a rectangle. And that's okay because I like the frayed look. So there's that. Move that guy out of the way. I need another phonics card here. Hold on. What are we gonna use? Use another ugly one. <laughs> well, it's not ugly, but box. Okay, box. Cover up the box here. Now this one is a little larger because my top tag is a little larger. So this is a four by six. So this is about a five, five and a half by seven, which makes sense because those are the incremental sizes that go up when you're, uh, you know, printing your photos here. Okay, so. Let's see, what am I doing? I think I'll go on here first. Just get along the outside. Now I am going to sew around the edges here. If you guys don't have access to a sewing machine, I would just make sure these are glued down very securely on the side. On all sides. All right. Put that puppy down there. Looks really good. Yay! This is fun. It's, I'm going to see if I can use my paper cutter here to go along the edge. I might need regular scissors. I don't know. But I'm just cutting the extra file folder off. Yep, that looks great. And I'm going to smush this down with my wallpaper spreader because see it did have a little bit of bubbling in the center you could just tell by looking at it you know how sometimes you can tell okay so that looks good let's see if this guy has any bubbles in the middle oh he did too he did too so we got to get rid of those there we go okay so those two are done no they're not I'm going to cut this off, too. There we go. Get rid of the nail. <laughs> the nail image there. All right. Now, do I like that up there at the top? No. So, let me get my scissors, and I'm going to cut that. I don't think this will go through my... Um, the fabric will go through my paper cutter. All right, so that looks good. And then I'm going to rough up the edges here because I like that look. Now there's a little bit right there, but that's okay. I'll figure that out. I have to put something on there. And I like to fray the edges. Just rub your, you know, nail across. And it works pretty good to get it, to get it fraying. Okay, so there's that. Now, what do you guys think? Since these are going to be what I call uh, freeform or layered, but not glued together, meaning the end product is going to be we're going to have two tags that um, are not glued together. They may be uh, tied together, but they're not going to be glued together. Do we, and I do mean we, want something on the back? Probably, just because. 
And like I did say that you could just distress the back, but I changed my mind. That's what happens when you are creating things as you go, right? Yes. So let me think about this here for a minute. What do I want on my background? I turned it over and I don't, <laughs> I don't remember what's in the front. So I got to flip that back over here and let's find some coordinating scrapbook paper. Okay. See what I got in my pile. I did have this. So I thought that was really pretty. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that for that lady. And for this guy, let's see. Got stuff in my pile. Always have piles, right? I have some wallpaper. Then this is the stuff that's really cool. It's kind of like paper. It's so thin. And my husband would say, that paper's so hard to hang when it because I guess there's different weights and I don't know what other term it would be, but different types of wallpaper. I don't know. Do I like that? That brings out the pinks. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll go with that. Okay, so let's cover the back. All right. Tape again. And I know there's, um, you know, mass making uh, tags. And I do do that a lot where you can make a whole bunch at once. But these are specific to a journal that I'm working on. So I wanted them to be specific, uh, you know, specific images and that kind of thing. So that's why I'm doing these on their own. Does that make sense? meaning uh, they have a specific image that I want to use, whereas the mass-making ones kind of uh, don't necessarily have a specific image, and you can use them for a variety of different journals. So, you know, just depending on what you're working on. All right, so let's get this guy on there. Do I want to cover the back of her or do I want her to just be, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll cover her. So forget what I said about the distressing the back. Although you could do that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, change my mind. Change my mind. Okay. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Like I say, every day is a good day if you can craft. That's what I think anyways. I'm gonna put this pretty lady down. All right, and we'll cut around her again. Let's see if I can do this without messing it up. Yeah, and this is where I might have to uh, just cut them by hand because I might be messing things up. Oh, no, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I should give myself more credit. Maybe I'm not going to mess everything up, right? All right, so just going around cutting these. See if this one went through, I don't know. Yeah, it did. I can just kind of tear the edge. That looks great. Yay. Let's cut this lady's the top off of her. And I probably could have done this if I thought ahead. And I try to think ahead. I truly do. <laughs> could have you know, sized everything front and back and then just did one cut. Ha, huh. oh, well, okay, she's ready. Let's do this guy. But to come to my own defense, I'm just talking to myself. 
yeah, well, I'm talking to you guys too, is sometimes I think it's harder to, if you cover the front and the back without trimming the edges, it's hard to see where your edges are, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, like, if I covered the front and the back, I wouldn't know where the actual tag was because everything was so big. So, maybe that's why I do that. All right. And that looks really good. I cut this little guy. See how these guys turned out. Looks fabulous. Fabulous. I do have a little bit along the side there, but I'll take care of that. A little bit showing through. Now the back of this one here. Okay. Yeah, all it takes is one inspirational piece. And so I am basing everything off of those these two uh, images for my tags. But you could do the opposite. You could say, oh, I really like this piece of fabric. I'm going to find something that goes with that and go the other route where you find the fabric first and then, uh, you know, build everything from there. Or you find a piece of cardstock and you go, oh, I want to build everything on that, you know, right? So really it can be anything to inspire you. Okay. Get all my little scraps out of the way here. I have a tendency, as you guys know, to become very messy. Now this one, see, that didn't work out too well. All right. I'm going to have to cut that. Where's my scissors? Here they are. And once you've got a line going, it's pretty easy to follow the straight line because I am cutting challenged. That's for sure. Now this is hitting something here. Hold on. Oh, I know what it is. I've got double-sided tape stuck <laughs> to my scissors. Oh, man. All right, now that's not going to work. Here, hold on. Something, something is being funky here, so I'm going to get out my heavy-duty scissors. There we go. Cut around all the edges here. All right, that looks good. Let's see about this lady. Get rid of that sticky tape that's on me and I don't know about you guys but when I leave my craft room I've got uh you know bits of paper and threads and <laughs> all sorts of stuff and I tend to track it around the house so yeah that's something all right how are these looking you guys I think they're looking pretty good And if I used my guillotine cutter, I don't know if this would all, you know, be able to be cut off at one time, but that's okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, this guy, I don't know. Can't really cut much of him off, so what we're going to have to do is distress the back. All right, let me move this out of the way. Move all these. I'm trying to clean as I go. How's that? Okay, so where are we at? Let's check it out. Oh, and here again, get the edges here. Right. So there is my lady. And she goes with that fabric and these 
cute little guys. Let me trim the edges on this. Go with that other piece. I'm just cutting off the edge. Sorry. I have to pull it up to my face or I can't see. <laughs> oh, gosh. Get the edges again. If there's any little sticker upper dudes. All right. Let's see how things are looking. Okay, they look fabulous. All right, now from here, what are we going to do? Of course, embellish. Let's see on the sides, though. Do you need any more distressing? Maybe along, like I said, on the back of this one because of the... Uh, paper coming through. Let's see about this. On the back, that looks really good. That one turned out really well. All right. And then even on your larger, the larger tags. All right, now I am second, I have some second thoughts. I'm thinking this one might be a little too big for this, or I mean the background. So I may cut that down because it's a looking a little large here, even for a tag, unless you want to, well, I don't know, you could do a full page tag, right? that for a second here. So I'm going around the edges here with all my, oh, let me get that again. That guy right there, that corner is giving me some fits. Maybe I'll corner around him. Ha! Showed you. All right. So we're corner around that guy and it looks, already looks better. Okay, so there we go. Now, you know, I am. I'm going to make this a little smaller. So what I'm going to do, you guys, is I am going to sew around the edges of all four of my pieces. You know, all four. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit, and then I will be right back because we are not done with these tags. We're just getting rolling here. So hold on just a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and let me show you what I did is I did sew around the edges of both of the tags here. I think it looks really cool and these look fabulous as is, but you know me, more is more. And like I told you, as I did cut down this particular piece so that um, it wasn't quite as large. So this is a four by six image and the bottom tag is now a five. Now, wait a minute, wait a second. This is a four by five, excuse me four by five and this lower is a five by six so it's just a little bit larger than the the back is a little bit larger than the uh, forward tag and same deal on this guy right here three by five and the background is a four by six so I was thinking, how are we gonna decorate these? And also, I would like to punch some holes for some ribbon or fabric to go through. Now, I use my Cropodile, and this is so cool. This is something that I got a long time ago, and I use it all the time, all the time. So, if your budget allows for it, I would definitely look into investing into one of these. And you know, you may get get them on sale at Hobby Lobby. Sometimes they have the, uh, the sales. So 
what I'm going to do is use the large hole on my crop -a dial and I'm going to center my uh, smaller tag onto the larger and I'm going to eyeball the center. Now hopefully it'll go through both. I haven't tried it, but these are pretty dang strong just so that we get the um, hole in the center of both. And it did. It even went through the fabric with a little bit of fraying right there, but I'll just cut that off. That's awesome. Now, okay, you guys are saying, yeah, that's great, Pam, but I don't have a crop -a dial This is what I've devised in lieu of a crop -a dial is a, what do you call this? Screwdriver, yay! And this is a mini that um, I stole from my husband's, uh, you know, workshop. He's got all sorts of tools. So this is, it's not even a Phillips or a flathead. It's just a point. This may be more of an, you could use an awl. That's another thing too. So I'm going to do that on this one. And I did do a little bit of practice just to make sure it went through. But it went through this one right here. All the way through. See? It came through just fine. So that is something that you could use in lieu of a crop -a dial. Now let's get the one underneath. Let's see. I just want to eyeball and get that on this in the center here. And you could measure it, but I'm not really that big into measuring. All right, and that went through just fine. So now that, granted, um, makes a smaller hole. You can use a larger uh, awl. And so I am going to, I don't have a larger one in front of me, so I'm going to enlarge these just with my crop -a dial So that's just something to consider. Let me get the other stuff out of here, is how big you want your hole to be, meaning, um, you know, how big is the thread or the ribbon or fabric that you're going to stick through it. There's that and that. All right. Yay. And another thing that I think is really cool is besides the eyelets that go with this, there's other things that you can put around these holes, although you don't have to do any of it. But that's this is just something that I like to do. I think this is pretty cool. I know you guys have seen these in the office supply section. Reinforcement labels, right? You can get them anywhere. So what I did, because I don't really care for the white in all my projects here, is I took one of these and I sprayed the whole thing. Ha ha, gotta be smarter than the labels, yippee. And what I sprayed these with, let me show you, is I have some Distress Oxide sprays from um, Ranger, Tim Holtz, uh, Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain, they come in a bunch of different ones. They also have Distress Mica sprays. Now these have a little bit of a uh, shimmer to them. And I like that because I like bling. So I think I did a combination of these two. You could also use spray paint or just, you know, Distress ink over the top. Um, my point is just to get the white down a little bit. So let's stick these on here. Now I think you may need to reinforce the reinforcements. <laughs> oh man. So I'm going to run my um, fabric, or excuse me, Scotch Create over the top just because I feel that it'll make them stick better. See? Doesn't that look good? It looks really good. And do the other side. So I'm going to continue on doing that real quick. And then. We're going to put these all together, and if time allows, I've got even more ideas because one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another. All right, so there's that. Get 
that little guy off of there. Let me cut that off. Just a little bit of a little edge here. Now you don't have to do this uh, with the with the glue, but I just feel that it'll make it more secure. I don't know. Okay, let me get the glue off my hands here. Oh, uh, I need a wipe, but I don't have one. Okay. Uh, see, I'm getting too much glue, you guys. I gotta watch it. Getting too much glue. Because when I first started with all the white uh, reinforcement tabs, I'm like, okay, do they make these in other colors? They probably do, but I haven't found any. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to color these. And it works great. All right, last one. Thanks for hanging with me here. I guess I could have sped up the camera, but oh well. Okay. Yep. All right. They are all completed. All right. So let's get them put back together here. Okay. Move that out of the way. This out of the way. Okay. Now let's thread something through these. I have a dress that I cut up from Goodwill. And this is some of the um, material. It was a Jessica McClintock. Do you guys recognize that name? <laughs> I think my uh, homecoming dress was Jessica McClintock. Pa! And then I've got some, um, what do you call this? It's not seam binding. I think it, well, it might be seam binding. So I'm going to use that. Sorry if I bonked the camera. So let's just stick these through. I don't know if they'll both go through at the same time. I don't know. Take my trusty trusty all there. Put this through. Maybe one, just one will go through. I don't know. Yeah, maybe just one. Oh, well. And then pull that tight. So that looks really stinking cute. Very cute. Let's do on this one, let's do the um, fabric from the dress. What I do is I fold it in half and then poke the center through and pull it through, not all the way. Sure, my reinforcement tab is stuck. It is. And then I'm going to do the same thing on that. Put that all the way through. And then once you pull it through the back, you're going to have this little loop. And you take the strands in the front and just thread it through the loop like that. And that's a lot of times how I like to add my uh, ribbon and stuff to my uh, tags. So, aren't those cute? <gasps> now think of this. Think of this, you guys. Okay, I'm on a roll. Now, continuing on in using up my mini ephemera. See, these are cute and they're, um, you know, movable and you can hang them on or tie them on your junk journal or stick them in pockets, whatever you want to do. But wouldn't it be cute to have an added pocket behind on one of these or in the back for additional surprises? So let's do it. I'm going to get out my mini ephemera again. Here's the pile. Here's the pile. All right, so let's see what goes with what. I don't know. This is kind of cool. Does that go? Yes, it goes. But I think I need a littler version of it. Let's 
let's stick that on there. Yeah, let's do that. Oh wait, I like this one too. I don't know. Hey, you know what I did, you guys, on this one? Oh no! I added... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the fabric on the front, not the back. Oh, but it still looks good. See, I wanted this on the other side. Rats. Okay, I'll fix that. I'll show you what I'm talking about, though. So let's add a pocket underneath. Oh, oh here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I think a longer pocket that you would be able to see some little uh, goodies sticking out of the side. So let's do that. I'm going to distress the edge of this guy again, because you know how I like that. Is that even? Mm. Looks pretty square. glue that down. Now what I'm going to do is glue it on just three sides so that you'll have, oh, you know what? Maybe not. I'll just glue it on the top and bottom so that it'll be a pocket on both sides. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use a combination of my Scotch Create and Fabri-Tac because Fabri-Tac is pretty darn uh, strong. Come on. So just along the top and the bottom. All right, I got a glue glob. Got rid of that, okay. So we're gonna put that right. Got stuff everywhere here, sorry you guys. Right along there. So I'm going to glue just the top and the bottom together, right? And obviously you could have done this before you added your tag to the other tag with the ribbon, but sometimes that's how I roll because sometimes things just come to me at different points. <laughs> ah. So I'm going to let that dry, but if you get the idea here, you can stick all your little bits and cuties under there. Let's see what we got. Got that. That would be cute. What else do we have? Another little tag there. You can stick on this side like that. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm stealing from one of my other ones. Stealing from that guy. What else do we have in here? I don't know, some wallpaper, right? So you guys get the idea is you have your tag here. Now wait, what happened to this guy? Oh yeah, that's this guy. All right, I'm gonna get, get my get my act together here. I'm kinda kinda, as my husband would say, willy-nilly today. Some other ephemera in here. Who knows what, right? You can do anything, really. Okay, so in summary, let me just flip this guy over because it bugs me. Take that out and go this way. other extraneous stuff out of the way. So here's what we've made today. Yippee! Ha ha! Love it. Now think of this. Oh, wait. I have some additional embellishments. Ooh, hoo, hoo. I got these at a craft, um, 
a craft store for donated crafts, and it's all little tassels that have been cut up. Talk about a gold mine, and they all come just like this. And here's a larger one, and I love when they're cut up because they just become so cute, right? So I wanna add this to that lady right there. Doesn't that look pretty? Or maybe down here. I don't know. I kind of like it right there. So we're just going to go for it. So can you see how things just get so... It's got glue on the back of this one. One thing leads to another, right? Just keep on embellishing to your heart's content. That's what I say. Put this on there. She looks just fabulous with that. Make sure I didn't glue her to the bottom. Nope, I didn't. Buttons, gonna add some buttons. Oh, that looks really cute too. Oh no, gosh, I can't stop. I did add a button there. You know, so you guys get the idea, right? So there's what we did today. Aren't these fabulous? Stick these in your journal. Clip them on the side. Um, you know, add some pockets in the back. Underneath. Oh, it's just, they're so stinking fun. And I am going to add that button later. <laughs> so thank you for being with me today. And we made our layered tags. So I hope you enjoy this. These just turned out fabulous, didn't they? I'm so excited. So stay tuned. We'll be doing some more videos and I appreciate every single one of you. So thank you again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Bye.